The expression bricks and mortar is used to describe something really solid and designed to last. But in reality, buildings are often demolished after less than a hundred years, and even during their lifetime, they change. They may move up or down the social scale, they may change function, they may be divided up or knocked together. This is the story of one building, College Green House. It stands just behind Queen's University in Belfast. In 1858, the university had just been built, and a row of houses called University Square stood to one side of it, while a new theological college had been built behind it, with a handsome front garden enclosed by railings. In 1870, one Archibald McCollum commissioned an architect called James McKillen to build a substantial house and two neighbouring buildings that would form the beginning of the terrace called College Green. 1870 was the first year that the Belfast Council required builders to submit bylaw drawings, and those for College Green House are amongst the earliest in the City Hall records. They show the ground floor of the house, including a large kitchen with its range and attached scullery, where the sink was, and pantry for food storage. As this was a grand house, it also had a coach house, harness room, and stabling, for five horses. The house was built of local red brick with stone dressings and slate roof. By 1880 it had become a Church of Ireland collegiate school, part of whose name is still legible over some of the windows. By 1890 the building had become a house once more, home to Dr. John McCormack, physician to the Belfast Institution for Nervous Diseases. In 1891, it was acquired by John McConnell, a JP and Freemason, who was managing director of Messrs. Dunville and Co., whiskey distillers. He was a friend of James Craig, first Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, whose father owned Dunville's. McConnell's five children were brought up at College Green House. Notable amongst them was his youngest daughter, Mabel, who became a suffragette and a committee member of the Gaelic League. For a while she was secretary to George Bernard Shaw, but then she met Desmond Fitzgerald, a young English poet of Irish extraction. Desmond became heavily involved with the Irish volunteers in Kerry in 1913, and... One night he and Mabel eloped from College Greenhouse and fled to Dublin, where he went on to fight in the Easter Rising in 1916. He remained interested in literary affairs, however, and this picture shows him talking to the poet T.S. Eliot. On McConnell's death, the house passed to new owners, who divided it into flats in 1934, completely altering the elevation to College Green and removing many of the ornamental features that would have been inside it. The early occupants of the new flats were genteel, including spinsters and academics. In the 1950s, they acquired a more bohemian neighbour, Alfred Armentier's Kitchener Arnold, he was a civil servant whose friends included actors and dancers, artists like George McCann and Dan O'Neill, and writers like Louis McNeese. Many other young artists have lived in the building since. James Miller and Susan Phillips would be two of the best known. However, the building had become neglected, with the old front door converted into a window and hidden behind an overgrown hedge. Stonework was eroded or missing, and cracks had developed in the brickwork. The roof of the stable was damaged by bombs, and its back wall lent out at an alarming angle. Then a fire occurred in one of the flats, and the building was closed as unsafe. Vandals broke in at this time. They stole the newel post 
and trashed the flats. Fortunately, Hearth Revolving Fund was able to acquire a long lease on the building at that stage. While they were getting the building listed, raising funds and preparing plans for the restoration, they put artists like Rita Duffy and Martin Wedge in as caretakers and to use the flats as studios. When restoration work started, a problem was encountered in the basement where an old timber ground beam had rotted away and joist ends were decayed. The front wall had to be propped while timber lintels were replaced and some additional steelwork had to be inserted to stabilize chimneys. The decision was taken to remove an extension from the 1930s conversion which spoilt the symmetry of the building. This exposed part of the original back wall which was cleaned and repointed. The front of the coach house was taken down and rebuilt using salvaged bricks and the door where horses would have been taken through to the stables was reinstated. The upper part of the old stable building, which had been damaged by nearby bombs, was taken down and rebuilt with a new roof structure. A new floor was inserted to tie the building together, and new wiring put in to convert the building into a restaurant. Although the roof is completely new, diners probably think it is as old as the rest of the place. People walk past a painting of a headless dog in front of the coach house. Most who notice it assume it has been there for many years, though in fact it was painted by caretaker artists around 2005. Brickwork on the main house was raked out and repointed and chimneys were restored to their original height with new stone copings and pots provided where missing. Where it was spalled or missing, stonework was cut out and replaced with carved detail replicated where necessary in the bay window and at the new dormers and second floor windows. Wrought iron finials and gates were repaired and new ones made where necessary. In the main house, walls were lined with thermal insulation board before window frames were reinstated or replaced. Casts were made from surviving details in the neighboring house and new ornamental plaster work made for corbels, ceiling roses, and cornices. The elevation to College Green was largely rebuilt to make good the changes in the 1930s and replace the original window details. Internally, the stolen newel post was replaced with a new one and doors were grained in the traditional Victorian manner. The dado on the staircase was lined with lin crust of paper, painted and highlighted to look like embossed leather. New kitchens and bathrooms were installed. Floors sanded and varnished. Existing shutters repaired and rehung, and traditional fireplaces put in. The building was opened by Garrett Fitzgerald, son of Desmond and Mabel, who had eloped from the house so many years earlier. Today the restored house contains one holiday flat and five let to long-term tenants, as well as the restaurant in the old stable buildings. Amongst the academics and professionals that now live there, the artistic tradition of the house continues as well.
Buildings change, residents and uses change, but the story of a building only gets richer through time. And people say that if you go past College Green House on certain days of the year, you will see a headless dog playing in the street.